it, you were going, I asked the question, which is when I was like, let's get the camera. The complications, because you were in the, you, you, you were in the hospital the longest, is that, am yeah, I right? I was in the hospital for a total of 100 days, total. I was in um, Mass General for 45 days. And then after, on my 45th day, they, 46th day, they trans transferred me over to um, Spalding Rehab. And I was at Spalding Rehab for 55 days. Uh, while I was at Spalding Rehab, I had two additional surgeries while I was there. They were considered day surgeries, which pretty much normally probably wouldn't have been a day surgery. Were you under for these or like? Yeah, yeah. I was, I was um, 18 times they put me under. 20 because of, I think it might have been 20 because of two out there. Yeah, anesthesia. Knocked out. They usually do like, at a time when they do me, they usually were doing three to four procedures minimum at a time. That means they were so doing this. They were doing the surgery here. Then they'd go over and they do the su surgery down here on this foot, and then like they do an artery thing or they do you know a skin release. But at the same time, they do a skin release here, like right on the side of my private here. They had to do another skin release because of a patch burn that they put in there. Uh, and then like an additional time, they were doing um, another time when they were cutting this back. They had to go in to um, my groin area, but right below my balls, right through my ass, they went in, cut me open to debris and pulled. They don't pull any of the debris out of you unless it needs to come out. So they went in and they took out there were three major BBs that were risking. Those are the things they stuck in them, right? Yeah, like the BBs. The, yeah. yeah, the ball bearings and stuff. They actually took those out, out because they were resting right next to my urethra. So if they went into my urinary tract, they would have went right in. They would have caused some severe problems. The doctor was saying. Yeah, it's amazing to me that you were conscious the entire time. At the bombing, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And you said you knew it was a bomb, right? Like you knew, you oh, knew yeah. what happened. I knew it was a bomb when the first one went off. We knew it was something's going on. This is something bad. You just had that feeling. You knew. Like, oh. Everybody I was with, there was a group of us, it was like eight of us at the time. You see, you look, we looked up, it was to our left, we saw the cloud of smoke and the debris, and it was a boom, real quick, boom, we looked. We all looked right at each other, and we're like, that's not good. All of us were in a circle like this, looking at each other, because I always stay back in crowds where I can see everything going on, and my friends were over here just shooting the shit, talking, and I just had received a phone call from my fiance a couple minutes before, so I was stepped away from the group to get some quiet, and uh, nobody was... So you, by, by you the were street. at the second bomb. Second bomb, correct. And uh, my buddy at the street looked right around. So this was all within a blink of an eye. You know, we were like, hey, you know, like, that's not good. And when I looked at one of my buddies, just instantly he said, get in the street, get in the street, get away from the buildings. Because he figured, he just knew, like, we all knew that it was like a bomb. And if there was more, it would have been within the crowds. So uh, obviously the street wasn't one because it was empty. Right. So he's like, get in the street, get in the street. And that's where I ran towards the street. That's where the bomb was, right on the edge of the street and sidewalk. So I ran right into it. When I woke up, there was somebody pushing on my chest. I didn't know that until I spoke with the girl. I thought it was someone sitting on my chest trying to do my tourniquets because I just felt the weight. All I could remember seeing was up and then like, like just some debris. Then it finally cleared up. It was just a gray cloud to me. Were you in pain or just shock? Shock. I, I felt no pain, but I knew my leg was gone. I knew it. Like I knew, I knew. I'm like, oh fuck! I just got blown up. Like I'm, I'm, I'm bad. You know what I mean? I'm really messed up. The first guy, the, the firefighter, um, that came to me, and actually he was the first one to put a tourniquet on. Uh, he said I handed him my foot, so I had to set up and grab my foot. I don't recall it, but he said I handed it to him like bring this to the hospital with us and the guy goes that's not gonna help you put it down and uh, then he tourniqueted me you know what I mean and um, yeah then that's when there was a nurse that was there with friends and she ran over and she came to me first because with someone working on somebody else or whatever she saw me laying there and she couldn't see the tourniquet that was already on me so she pulled off her belt she put a second when she went to go put the second one on 
that's when she realized it was already one on. Mm -hmm. But she, she saw me still bleeding, so I needed to put another one on. And she was the one that would stop me from sitting up. Because every time I sat up, the blood would squirt out. So she was the one keep me, keeping me down. And, you know, thank God, because it would have bled out to death. I would have bled out. I, I did bleed out at the hospital. But I would have bled out earlier and not been able to make it to the hospital. Um, you mean when you say you bled out the hospital, like they revived you at the hospital? Is that what you mean? Uh, I, like, literally bled out like I passed out from the loss of blood. So they had to stick me, get blood in me. The firefighter said when he assessed uh, assess the situation, I guess he claimed that I was too badly hurt. Like, so for him to work on other people would be more worth for the benefit of them. I heard some people like, hey, you got to make the decision. It's Based, tough. Yeah. And it's, it's a hard decision to yeah. make. Like, you know, my fiance's father's a firefighter. And, you know, it's not that he made the wrong decision. He made the right. It's just I freaking luckily made it. You know what I mean? And uh, I understand that. That's a part of it. Like, I would have hated him for me if I wasn't going to make it to waste time on me. You know, right. get somebody else help. I don't, I understand. Like, I'm not the guy I kind of was like, I'm sorry I made that. So I can't believe it. I'm so happy that you made it, though. And, I didn't think we were going to make it. That's why when I assessed the situation, I moved on to other, you know. He, he's a great guy. He made great decisions. He did, because I was screwed up. Right. I was very, very screwed up. Uh, and while uh, the lady was sitting there, she was she noticed, oh, shit, he's on fire. Because there was smoke. And there was smoke coming, smoke coming. And they were, like, choking on the smell and the thing. It's the back of my leg, you know. It was my, just smoking? My jeans were on fire. You know, I got down here on the back of this leg, all that, you know, and then my butt from the blast. That's when this guy, Jimmy Davis, he's a Boston police officer in Shana, uh, he, he was like, I have a paddy wag right here. The guy, the fight was like, you have a paddy wagon? Can you fit? How many people can you fit in it? He goes, two. He goes, probably two. And they had us on backboard at that time. So me and Roseanne, another victim, sent around amputee, above the knee amputee. They backed over the thing, got jumped in it, backed it over, threw us in it, and he took us to the hospital. It took like three minutes. That's it. You got to say it. I said to him when he first came to me, I don't want to die. I have a son and a fiance that I, I want to, you know, and uh, I want to make it back home to. And the guy said, just stick with that, you know, and so did the nurse. He said, stay with that. Think about, think about your fiance, Mark. Think about your little boy. Think about your fiance. And that literally is all I thought about. So then in the paddy wagon, we pull up. And right when we were backing in, my phone rings, and I knew it was her. So I said, hey, can you answer that? That's my, that's my fiancé. Just tell her what's happened. And the firefighter answered the phone, and he said, you have to get the Mass General. And uh, she was like, yeah, all right, Bims, you know, stop. You know, let me talk to Mark. Stop joking around. And the guy goes, ma'am, I'm not joking. Mark's been hurt. You need to get to Mass General Hospital. And I'm hanging up, and he hung up the phone. So um, they shipped me out. I know I don't remember ever coming. I knew I remember the doors opening, and I just quit. I just quit. I was just I couldn't. I had no more fight in me, and uh, obviously I did to come out of the coma and stuff. But how long were you in a coma for? That's the thing. We this, this experience. How many? Four. Four or five. Four or five. This is the thing. Like this experience was so traumatic mentally for like everybody. Those days in that hospital, Mass General was, it just all seems like the same day. I mean, it was, I was in there for a long time and the rooms there were not too cheery, you know yeah. what I mean? And not a lot of great experiences happened in those rooms. I hallucinated for a long time through ICU. I really don't recall much of it. I recall some of it, but not much. They had me so medicated because of the pain. I was in so much pain in this left foot, they had to put an epidural in my spine twice. They had to do it twice. You know, epidurals for pregnant ladies, they yeah. numb the lower half of your body. So they numb my lower half of my body. Amazing, you know what I mean? But that was the only way I had a little bit of relief. Was there like a turning point at all where it's like, okay... Nah, it was a lot, it's, it's been a lot of pain. Is this just continuous? It's just continuous. I mean, but it's just everything else physically, I'm getting better. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. my hands, my arms. So I, are you like therapy schedule? Right now, no, right now I'm only three days a week. Uh, hopefully when I get my leg, I'll be able to do five days, but insurance. They only cover so many days. They only cover so many weeks. And, um, yeah, it was, it was pretty crazy, but like I was saying, my, 
my family took more of a mental impact mm-hmm. than I did. Those nights that these guys even slept with me, and f- even even tonight, like tonight I'll go to bed, she'll be up all night with me. Because mm-hmm. I'm like, ah, oh. because if I sleep with this leg bent for too long, I can't straighten it out. And then these toes, and this, these two toes, they just kill constantly. This one I cut, cut my toenail, because I, I have no feeling in it. Mm-hmm. These toes, it's weird. And the only two toes I can move are those two. I can't even move those. So, it's like, uh, this right here, across here, that's really, it, it's just painful. That heel, like I showed you, painful. Mm-hmm. This ankle right back, the Achilles tendon here, painful. Like, you know, all of it hurts, but this is like, just sitting here, it's in pain. And then my knee, my knee had a tibia fracture. It takes a while to heal. I have a lot of other, I have just in this x-ray from here to here, there's 12 BBs just in this. And like, I still have minimum one, two, three, four surgeries I still gotta go through. I got inner air damage, permanent inner air damage. Yeah, it's been, um, yeah, I've met amazing people on the way. Like people have been amazing. People stop me in the Berlin tomorrow we're shopping. Hey Mike, how are you? You know, I don't want to weird you out, but I follow you, and you know, I'm so happy you're home. I hope you're enjoying your family. You know, which, you know, it's it's cool. It's like I appreciate it. That motivates me. Like the people care. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That helps me get up and go and do things and try things. You know. So how's the mindset like now? Are you like what? I want my leg. <laughs> yeah. You know, and I just mad want... anger. Nah, oh, please, no, please, not at all. No, I'm not mad. I'm mad at all. I mean, aggravated that. You know, what I am, I'm upset that they took some of my son's innocence, you know what I mean? And they took me away from my son. Like that, I'd like to slap around for, you know what I mean? And uh, I'm upset that he, what he did to the, the other family, you know, the Martin family. But they were they were your old boy, I couldn't imagine losing mm-hmm. my son. Like, I'm mad because they killed the little kid. That coward put that bomb down, walked away, knew, knowing that there was kids there. He walked away and said, hm. That's what people gotta remember. Like this kid's in trial. Like he knowingly put a bomb down, even if he was pressured or not pressured by his brother. He put a bomb down next to a family with kids. The pressure Locked away yeah. and detonated. The pressure into the brother. Who? That's irrelevant. Irrelevant. You're a grown man. Yeah. You're a boy. However old you are, how do you do that to a kid? Like, knowingly. I mean, knowingly. Yeah. Says off. He's an animal, and people can't forget that he's he's an animal. They shot cops. They you know, shot fighting back. If he was just a scared little boy that wasn't pressured, he wouldn't have rose, he wouldn't have raised the gun. He would have just quivered and turned himself in. No, he was an animal. He knew what he was doing. He they went up and shot that cop sitting in the MIT. Like, More people need to like it, that that drives me bananas. Like oh, one of the supporters? top things. Yeah, oh, that his, like his the Rolling Stones, all of that, his like American. all the people yeah. that say this was fake yeah. and it was a movie. Yeah, it it, it, it let me tell you, he's not a hero. He destroyed families' lives. And if you think he's a hero, good luck to you. Because I hope your life gets destroyed as well. You have one leg. I have a five-year-old boy. I'm going to probably lose my foot. And it's not an act. It's not a fucking movie. All right? Just letting you know. And I appreciate and I want to thank all the people that really understand, that have a brain. Thank you very much for everything you guys have done, supporting me, and all the other victims. Everybody needs help. If you know a victim, help them because we all need help getting in and out of our car, using restrooms. You know, if you use a restroom, please, for us, make sure you don't pee on the seat. <laughs> you know, trying to make a joke, but it's the truth. I'm it's, taking that to heart because yeah, I always it's, piss it's all gross. this. That, I mean, that's not going to happen anymore. And, but. but the people, the generosity is what keeps me happy. It is. It's what keeps me motivated. It keeps me going. Like, to see other people do good things for other victims and just talking to them about how it makes them feel getting a card. Like I have a stack. I have bins of cards and blankets in these blankets like this that, you know, a friend made, had made for us. Very nice friend. When I'm having a down night, you know what I mean? When I'm having a bad day or when my foot's really hurt me, you know, we do go in and read some of them cards, you know. I mean, I read a lot of them. And there's a lot I haven't even read yet. Just like people like you that do something generous, you know, generous out of the goodness of your own heart. You're like, you know what, we're going to put these shirts up. Yeah, we're going to we, sell them. Yeah, and on that note, I mean, we'll give you the check. And, and to be honest, we did nothing. I mean, we had the website, we had the following. So it's all 
you know, yeah. the readers who wanted to do it oh, were looking. I so, appreciate the reading. And, and honestly, it, it's it's a lot, but it's not. But it's it's right. you know, hopefully, it helps with whatever whatever you were saying. And you know, are you, you kidding me? No, that's that's what Is we that raised. Right? That's right. So that's wow. I mean, your sister mentioned trying to get a eventually a house to like a new one, a handicap. So hopefully that. Well, I told you it was going to be a lot. I mean, for us, it's what we raised. And we That's were a lot more. You know, we were kind of trying to help a guy that fit what our readers would be like. You kind of, you know, you could have been one of us. You could have been me. You could have been any of our readers. So it was just trying to find something that guys could make a difference with. And that's why they bought the shirts. So that, Yeah, that's going to make a difference. That's, that's what we want to do. That's what all the readers did. Wow. And we appreciate you taking the time, telling the story, the whole, you know, the whole works. It's crazy. Oh, it's like I said. It, it's as much as I'd love to take credit. It's just all the readers. And again, it's Thank like you very much. there's no there's, there's the shit you've been through. It's you, you could have done it. You could have gave. Them. No, that's it's gonna, that's going to help a lot. Just because, like I said, just even with the thought of cutting off my foot and stuff, like. That's, that's, that's all. Me, that, that helps me a lot to take back the idea, of, you know, a little bit more about just the rush I'm in. And that's kind of what your sister was saying. When we again, we when we did it, we we're like, let's try to find guys that maybe we're we're in a we're in a spot. Thank you very much. No, it's, thank you. I know. Thank we, you. For we that. appreciate thank you for the rain. You don't have to do it. Yeah. No, I don't. Do no, yeah, but everything you've gone through and staying strong is an inspiration. Wow. So it really is. And let us even come in here and turn the cameras on and. You know, hear the story. It's, it's what. No, that's it, what it, it, it's I, hard to hear, but it's not hard to hear. So, but well, people got I to also hear. make it. I try to joke about it and not make it so difficult. But I mean, I, that day was the scariest day of my life. I never knew if I was coming home. Like I didn't. I didn't know if I was coming home to her or to my boy. And that was the scariest day of my life. So I mean, that story, reality, like should be the scariest story ever told. But yeah, I'm nobody should. I'm here. I'm, yeah, you know, there was a lot of us that shouldn't have made it, made it, and their families were lucky, and unfortunately, other families weren't too lucky. Oh my God, that's crazy. Yeah, it's it's, it's how much they were the the shirts got. So hopefully it helps. Like I said.